sources of musical sound. sound. Musical sound can be set up by oscillating strings like guitar, piano, violin. Membranes like kettle drum, snare drum. Air columns like a flute, oboe, piped organ. Wooden blocks and a steel bars like marimba, xylophone, and many other oscillating bodies. Most instruments involve more than a single oscillating part. In the violin, for example, not only the strings but also the body of the instrument participates in producing the music. Ah, this is all kind of a violin or a saxophone. This is a violin, viola, cello, bass. This is a soprano saxophone. This is a alto saxophone. This is a tenor saxophone. This is a bartenor saxophone. This is a bass saxophone. This sonometer uses a single stretched wire and a sounding board to demonstrate sound production from a stretched wire. The wire is put under tension with a hanging weight. Electrical pickups transform vibrations in the wire into electrical signals which are amplified and then fed into this speaker and oscilloscope. Here is a note produced by the wire under the full tension of the weight. If we decrease the tension in the wire by lifting up on the weight, the frequency decreases. If we shorten the wire to half its length by putting a bridge in the middle, the frequency increases. and increases again when the wire is shortened once more. Notice that the frequency produced is not pure just after the wire is plucked. That's because harmonics in the wire produce additional higher frequencies. The harmonics are more intense when the wire is plucked at the end. This xylophone has a series of metal bars of various sizes. We'll strike three of the bars and observe the frequency and purity of the tone emitted with a microphone and oscilloscope. Here is the first bar with a frequency of 880 hertz. Here is the second bar with a frequency of 1760 hertz. Here is the third bar with a frequency of 3520 hertz. This glass tube contains a movable piston. We'll drive this small speaker at the end of the tube at 1500 hertz and show resonance at different tube lengths by moving the piston. When the sound intensity is greatest, the tube is in resonance. If we mark the positions of the pistons which give us resonances, we see that they are regularly spaced.
We'll now increase the driving frequency and repeat the action. What will happen to the spacing of the positions that produce resonance? The new spacing is shorter. This small microphone will now be moved inside the tube while the tube is in resonance. The output of the microphone will be displayed on this oscilloscope. This glass tube will resonate when air is blown across the opening. If we repeat this action with a longer tube, how will the frequency change? The frequency of the sound is now lower. Here is a longer tube with a still lower frequency. We'll use this long glass tube and some cork dust to demonstrate standing sound waves in a column of air. The standing waves will be produced by driving the air in the tube with the output from this rod. When the standing wave forms, the motion of the air pushes the cork dust into regularly spaced piles. This is note, this is antinote, this is note. This wood whistle produces a sound with a certain frequency when blown. If we shorten the air column inside the whistle by moving this end stop, how will the frequency produced compare with the original frequency? The new frequency is higher and continues to increase as the length of the air column is shortened. These pipes will produce loud musical sounds when a gas burner is placed inside them at just the right point. This too produces sound at its resonant frequency. This pipe is longer than the first. It produces a sound with a lower frequency. This glass tube has a stainless steel screen inside, which we heat with a burner until it's red hot. Hot air rising from the screen causes the tube to produce a musical tone. If we turn the tube on its side, it no longer produces sound. Returning the tube to a vertical position restores the sound. Recorder. 
Standing wheels can be set up on a stretched string that is fixed at both ends. This board end is a, a note because they cannot move. Okay? Yeah. The, the distance error must be the integral number of half wavelengths. This is one half wavelengths, there's two half wavelengths, there's three half wavelengths. So, wavelengths cannot be anything. It has to satisfy equal to L over N, where N equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. And the frequency equal to mu over lambda. This lambda is fixed number with N. The V decided by the stretch string. V equal to square tau over mu square root. Okay. So the frequency can rewrite N V over 2L. When n equal to 1, we call a fundamental frequency. Uh, and larger than 1, 2, 3, 4, we call a harmonic frequency. They arise because waves traveling along the string are reflected back onto the string at each end. If the wavelength of the waves is suitably matched to the length of the string, the superposition of waves traveling in opposite directions produces a standing wave or oscillation mode. The wavelengths required of the waves of such a match is one that is corresponds to a resonance frequency of the string. We can set up a standing wave of sound in air-filled pipes in a similar way. As sound waves travel through the air in the pipe, they reflect at each end and back through the pipe. The reflection occurs even if an end is open, but the reflection is not as completely as when the end is closed. If the wavelength of the sound waves is suitably matched to the length of the pipe, the superposition of the waves traveling in opposite directions through the pipe sets up a standing wave pattern. The wavelengths required of the sound waves for such a match is one that corresponds to a resonance frequency of the pipe. Many other aspects of the standing waves have patterns are similar to those of a string waves. The closed end of a pipe is like the fixed end of a string in that there must be a note, zero displacement there. And the open end of the pipe is like the end of a string attached to a freely moving ring, in that there must be an anti note there. The simplest standing wave pattern that can be set up in a pipe with two open ends is shown at this one. Uh, on this open end, this is anti nose, maximum displacement, okay, maximum amplitude. And we can describe similar like a transverse way, like this one. Uh, this is the way uh, uh, f learn from the transfer. This is the maximum amplitude. This is not, this is anti -no. This is anti -no. okay? The standing wave pattern of figure is called fundamental mode or first harmonic. For it to be set up the sound wave in a pipe of lens air must have a wavelength given by air equal to half wavelengths. So the lambda must be equal to two L. It's a fundamental, okay? The fundamental and one or more of the higher harmonic are usually excited at the same time. The music sound is the superposition of these components. The speed of sound depends only on medium, okay? V in a string is square root tau over mu, or in the pipes, V could be over root. There's other possibility. Uh, this is the length equal to one half length. This is a length equal to two half length three half lengths, 
one, two, three, four, four hands have length and so on. So this error equal to n over multiply half length. n can be one, two, three, four, five. And the lambda must be two error over n. And the v depends on the air and the median equal to square root of b over two. So the frequency equal to v over lambda equal to m times v over 2l. Okay. n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If the pipe is one close, one open, so the error first possible is a, the error equal to one quarter wavelength. It's only quarter of wavelength. And the second possibility is one, two, three, three quarter wavelengths. Okay? And it's one, one, two, three, four, five quarter wavelengths. Okay? And the seven. So this error must be an all number times a quarter of wavelengths. One, three, five, six, or uh, seven. Okay. And let's V are the same. Uh, so in this case, lambda equal to uh, yeah, 4L over 2MO plus 1. And frequency equal to V over lambda equal to 2M over plus 1 multiplied by V over 4L. This is an odd number, okay? Odd number, okay? Then we rewrite it. Rewrite this one. We make it is to v over four l two. So we multiply by, uh, divide by two, multiply by two. Okay, we get it. This is four v over four l v over four l. This is even number. This is all number. So what we have is if this tube is both open, all both close, then with this number we take multiple by even number. If one close, one open, and we multiply by uh, odd number, uh, that's very easy to remember. Uh, this is a sound waveform of, of different instruments. This is from flow, uh, this is from oboe, uh, this is from saxophone. When this tuning fork is struck, the sound it produces is relatively faint. If we place it in a box designed to resonate at the same frequency as the fork, the sound is much louder. When we strike the fork and place it in this larger box, the sound is not as loud. the sound from this lower frequency tuning fork does increase strongly when placed in the larger box. Sample. We make round noises from the room, set up the fundamental standing wave in a cardboard tube of length L 67.0 centimeter with two open ends. Assume that the speed of sound in the air within the tube is 343 meter per second. Question A. What frequency do you hear from the tube? Well, now this is a both end open, so we use this one should be odd number. I'm sorry, even number. Two, four, six, eight. Okay. And we have everything. Okay, we have a V, we have L, you put them inside. The lowest is for two, okay, five, 256 hertz. If you jam your ear against one end of the tube, what fundamental frequency do you hear from the tube? When you jam one end of the tube, this tube becomes one open, one close. So we have used another formula. 
as I said, this number, you have to use the odd number, okay? One, three, five, seven, and so on, okay? Uh, so this is equal to M, 122. This M is one, three, five, six is odd number. This is even number. We'll use this metal tube to show the difference in resonant frequency of a tube with open and closed ends. This 256 hertz tuning fork will excite the closed end tube, but will not excite the tube when the end is open. When both ends of the tube are open, this 512 hertz tuning fork will strongly excite a standing wave in the tube. When the opposite end is closed, the 512 hertz fork no longer excites the tube strongly. These small organ pipes produce tones of definite frequencies when they are blown. Each pipe has an end piece which may be removed to show the effect on frequency. Here is the first pipe, first with the end piece, then without. Here is the second pipe, first with the end piece, then without. Here is the third pipe, first with the end piece, then without. Beats, beats phenomena, the amplitude of a sound changes periodically. We have two sources of sound, S1, SM, cos I, omega 1T, S2, SM, cos I, omega 2T. Omega 1 is very close to omega 2, almost the same, a little bit different. And we put them together, ah, we get it. Get yeah, the total equal to SM cos omega 1 plus omega 2. And from trigonometry, we know cos alpha plus cos beta equal to 2 cos half alpha minus beta or times cos half alpha plus beta. Okay. This is uh, plus over two is almost equal to the f original frequency, okay? This is uh, the uh, substitute, a difference between the frequency. So we can rewrite this one as 2s cosine omega prime t plus omega t. This omega t is almost equal to its one, okay? And omega prime equal to omega one minus omega two over two, which is much, much smaller than this one. So look at this one. This likes oscillation, simple harmonic motion with the amplitude a slowly change a little bit, okay? Because this is change is very slow. Almost does not change, okay? Okay. So S is a way with angular frequency omega. And amplitude, this one, which changes much slowly than cos omega t, okay? Like that, we have these two, S1, S2, and we put them together, uh, we find what? We have the amplitude have another changes, okay? This is called the beats, uh, this is called the beats. A beat 
that is a maximum of amplitude will occur when the quantity 2SM cos omega prime t has the value plus 2S or minus 2S. We know that each of these value occurs every circle. So the number of beats per circle is twice the frequency at which the amplitude varies. Okay? So the frequency of beats equal to 2 omega prime, uh, equal to the difference between 2 omega. Okay? Uh, with this one, we can correct the sound of piano and violin and so on. Musicians use beats phenomena in turning their instrument. These two tuning forks have frequencies of oscillation that are very close together. The frequency of one of the forks can be adjusted by sliding these weights up and down the tines or arms of the fork. Here is the sound produced when the two forks are set at nearly identical frequencies. Now we'll raise the frequency of this fork slightly and repeat the demonstration. Notice the variations in sound intensity or beats. When the difference in frequency is increased, the beats occur more rapidly. We'll demonstrate beats and sound waves using these two audio oscillators. The signals from the oscillators will be added together and amplified, and then fed into this speaker and oscilloscope. The oscillators start with equal frequencies. Now we'll decrease the frequency of one oscillator. Now we'll further decrease the frequency of the oscillator. Example, you wish to turn the nose A3 on a piano to its proper frequency of 220 hertz. You have available turning forks whose frequency is 440 hertz. How should you proceed? The second harmonic AC is 2 times 220, 440. So you listen beats by turning piano until the beats notes disappear. Okay, it's 440, 440. If you don't see the beats, that means their frequency are the same. 